I am so astronomically pissed off. I got a booze on my nose. I got a fucking mild knot on my fucking forehead on some Cardi B shit. And I don't know what to feel. I'm at the stage where it's just like, I don't know. It's like, I don't, I'm going through the cycles of grief right now. And it's like, ah, damn, that was a really cool dude. At first. Oh, at first. Mm. And now I feel like my blood is boiling and I feel like anything else is about to set me off. I'm really close to, like, now that I'm this angry, I'm really this close to going to my housemate and being like, fuck you, nigga. You can't complain about all that shit going on in our household when you're the one leaving behind crumbs and spills and doing this, doing that, not cleaning up after yourself, not washing your hands after taking a shit, but complaining that everything's sticky. Fuck you, kill yourself. I'm like, this close. I'm trying to keep it together so bad. But I'm super upset because it's like, okay, imagine you're going to have a really, really nice date. Like a really nice date. And last night it was such a fucking nice date. I hear my stupid ass roommate in the next room. Fuck you, wash your ass. But either way, all they need to fucking do was like last night. It was such a great time. I looked amazing. We had a wonderful little mini photo shoot at a mall. We got a whole bunch of delicious food, all that. And then it all went down the drain because next thing you know, I had his fucking ex showing up at the fucking front door, just coming into their like apartment that they're both moving out of. And he didn't expect her to be there for a few, like at least a few fucking days. And they were already separated and shit. But I guess he lied about how recent he told me six months. It turns out the real answer was a month ago. Lying ass motherfucker. And so you can imagine the horror I felt when I woke up, like, next to him in bed, not having sex or anything, just there. And then you just wake up and see this chick, like, eyes fucking bulging, jaw hanging down, looking, like, astonished, shocked, like, sad, awkward, maybe a bit amused. And then next thing you know, it just quickly escalated. And then it just became this, yeah, next thing you know, a fight broke out. And a part of me is still just like, what the fuck did she say fuck me for? Because it's like, that nigga is the one who lied to you. He's the one that did shit. Why are you... Ugh. But it's like, I already know that if a bitch is willing to fight a girl over a man, even if the girl didn't know or didn't do shit, and also they're separated. Actually, that's the worst part. They're fucking separated. If we are, if you are not date, I even asked. Like, pre-ass beating, mid-ass beating, post-ass beating. I just straight up said, are y'all still fucking or dating or what? Because, like, this doesn't make, this is just kind of dramatic otherwise. And they both were quiet. When he was quiet, that made me think, okay, they probably are. But then she was also quiet. And so it's like, either one, she didn't want to talk to me because we just got in a fight. Or two, they really weren't dating. But all I know is it seems like they still very much were separated because at any point that I asked, she did not say they were still an item whatsoever. She was just extremely upset. He did explain, though, once it all was said and done, that, like, that her little cousin died or whatever in Seattle. And so here I was like, oh, this is super cool. This is, like, oh, wait, sorry, no, sorry, I'm zoning out. I just got done spitting. What I meant to say was, I didn't, it's not cool that her cousin died. I apologize. Sometimes I zone out in conversation. You've seen it in my other videos. Swear to God, Jesus Christ, that's so bad. No, her cousin died and she was probably just traumatized from that. And then it probably doesn't help if you come home to an apartment that you're moving out of for a relationship that was a mutual breakup, but that you're still depressed about not working. And then you just see me like fully dressed in your bed like snuggled up next to your like ex-man that probably wouldn't do good for anybody even then that's a matter of like oh that like the mature thing to do would have just been to have me leave quietly if she wanted to go off she could fucking go off going off is not the issue why do you want to fight why do you want to actually have a physical altercation and risk going to jail that is the stupid fucking aspect because at any like that just boggles my mind and i don't i don't like really just over some white fucking like just just twink tight like really like you should be fighting him because he's the one lying to me. like we could have teamed up well i wouldn't have joined in on the fighting definitely not he was still very sweet to me but i would have been like yeah that's fucked up and i'm leaving don't contact me again because this is fucked up to do that girl because i have morals the fact that you just were like sorry one second the fact that 
you just decided to do that is so pathetic. It, just all of it's pathetic. And the way he reacted to being called out on, like, the lie he said, and then the way she reacted, just all together, I don't know. It's kind of funny because, like, he was like, ooh, I know you've been stressed out recently. I know you've been really stressed out. I'm, I'm going to cheer you up this week, and I'm going to turn it all around. And he almost did until I woke up at 8.30 a.m. in some fucking conflict with this girl screaming and clapping her hands at the foot of the bed. Like, so how long have you two been fucking? How long has this been going on? And getting ready to have her little Regina George psycho moment. And then she full on, like, uh, like she full on was screaming like a banshee. And my ears still hurt hurt and it's been like over five hours since the altercation my nose also hurts but whatever i'll put some ice on it just man the dating scene i thought the dating scene had a few turds in it but it's got fucking razor blades and needles bitch just what because it's like okay i met this yeah that one guy dava i went on the first date with him it was a lot of fun despite the bad kissing the second date he just made a joke about his cousin getting sex trafficked um that other guy, the guy who took me to Lake Tahoe for 4th of July, that was great. And then he ruined it in 24 hours with online stalking. And yes, I do mean full on online stalking because he didn't know shit about me and still somehow managed to find this YouTube channel and other social medias without even knowing my full name or my last name. He just went to a hacker party and was like, hey, here's a, like vague topics she might have discussed her age and her race and like her gender. Let's see what you can do. And then they found it that's fucking creepy and then he didn't want to hold himself accountable for that and then here i am like i'm on a date with someone like i really was thinking to myself what's the catch with this guy he's a little too perfect he's a little too charming everything's a little too fun with him what's the dealio and it turns out the motherfucking dealio is psycho x and or lying ass nigga just it's so fucking pathetic all of it and it's depressing you just didn't need to do that. And, uh, like, I was telling my friends about this dude, and they were like, he sounds amazing, he sounds perfect, you deserve this. You deserve a guy who treats you so good and so nice. And I even last night, I was like, this is such a dream. I hope this can last for a long time. And I even got nervous. I was like, what if this just stops out of nowhere? What if something came up? What if this is my last time ever seeing him? But I thought, you know what, then I'll just cherish this moment even harder. Even if he goes ghost... Or it falls for someone else, I'm okay with it. Turns out it was neither. It turns out he's just a lying motherfucker who put me in a situation where I have to even get into a fight with some black film cell because he wanted to be a lying, weird piece of shit. It's hard to really say my feelings in a succinct manner. I guess it's just like, I, I wouldn't say embarrassment. I'm not quite in the like shaking my fist at God or the universe type thing. It's just like, I don't know disappointment like i'm just disappointed i thought he was a really nice guy and everyone else did too and i was excited to see where it would go and we didn't even have sex when i went to his house last night we just generally watched tv and cuddled to sleep and it was a lot of fun and i hate that it had to go this way but what the fuck ever it's just like i am tired of meeting people and thinking they're great and then it's just like the biggest red flags ever can just pop the fuck out I remember on the first date I had with him, I did note, and I did talk to him about this before our second date, because we were in Chinatown looking at stuff, and then they, the topic of the moving came up. They said, yeah, I'm moving from my current apartment. I found this new place. It's a lot close to work, and I really like it. And I just asked, oh, are you only moving just because it's close to work, or are there any other reasons as well? Like, just to make conversation, just because I was curious, like, hey, is there any, like, is it, like, well, like, does it have great open windows? Is it cheaper? Is it in a nice neighborhood? Blah, blah, blah. But instead, he got kind of, like, shifty about it. And then actually sort of rude to me until he finally admitted, okay, yeah, since it's cheaper and I'm moving out with my ex. But don't worry, we've been separated for, like, six months. So, like, it's already for a long time coming. I'm already emotionally checked. And then, like, he did apologize to me and he was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I was just really embarrassed because I didn't want to scare you off. Just to find out fucking one bruised nose and not on the forehead later and back pain and neck pain it's like oh like the fact that he really tried to be all you know how i told you that we had been like separated but still together six months ago and how we only broke up a month ago no the fuck you didn't tell me that if you did i would have left 10 times sooner i would have never entertained a second date 
You fucking idiot. Oh, I'm about to faint. Mm, you stupid bitch. Mm, I'm annoyed. Anyway, that's one hell of a way to start a Saturday. And, yeah. I'm kind of coping with my rage by just re-watching the video I took of her being a menace. Just to remind myself, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy at all. She was indeed exactly as bad as I remember. I did everything I could to stay rationally calm. I didn't do anything that could be seen as antagonistic. I wasn't trying to, at least. At the very fucking least. And yeah, she got backhanded because you shouldn't be fucking attacking me. And, and like, attack that nigga, but don't attack me. Just what the fuck? Here I was thinking I was just gonna, like, wake up. I woke up so refreshed. It was the best sleep I had had in ages on some soft-ass pillows, amazingly soft blankets. I wake up and see that bitch looking like the boiled one from Nominon in the fucking doorway. Fucking terrifying and awkward. And next thing you know, it was an episode of Baddies East mixed with Bad Girls Club. And next thing you know, he's calling me a lift ride before she can bring the goons out. And yeah, he's just, all of this is pathetic. The only thing that is going to console me, I guess, is that no, it's like, one, I have to not talk to him. Like, but I'm, like, it should be easy, but like I said, I have a mental illness, so sometimes, a part of my brain is still like, is he okay? I want to talk to him. He's the one who put you in this situation. <sighs> Jesus, I still have some healing to do, because here I am, this nigga had me in a situation to get fucked up. And it's still, like, I had to really tell him, file a fucking police report and had to really, 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 really tell him to do that. That's not what my future husband or soulmate would do. Yeah, my future husband or soulmate wouldn't even put me in this fucking position at all. So, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, charges get pressed and filed against that bitch. And I am gonna just, I don't know. I think I just need a nap. Like, a solid nap. Might take up a friend's offer for, like, some conversation later with a little sip-sip. Because at least a little bit to take the edge off. And I'm eating my feelings. Three boxes of food and one to go. Hmm. I don't know. I'm just tired of it. Why is the dating scene like this? And like I said, this is kind of what I mean when I say it's not a blessing to meet dudes who are so infatuated with me that they're willing to put me in bad situations or even risk, like, bad happening as a side effect because they just want to lie about one thing or the other just to keep me around. So I'm flamingly mad, but I guess my coping mechanism for now is a nap and I'm going to look up a bunch of shit that I'm going to tell them to buy for me. Because, hell, fuck it, on our date last night, they tried to be all, Ooh, I didn't know you wanted that shea butter fucking lotion from Lush. And it's like, nigga, you heard me say that I was out, and you saw that I kept coming back to it. Like, yeah, closed mouths don't get fed. I should have spoke up. I was nervous. I didn't want to pay $11 for a soap. But then again, if they're the ones who said, Ooh, $11 for a soap actually isn't that fucking bad. That's quite affordable. And then also, they buy Valentino and Ralph Lauren and shit. Hell, the pants I got from their place, because I couldn't even change out of their clothes because of how fast we had to leave is fucking polo whatever the fuck that is so simply put it's like yeah if he wants to be in my life or see me again he owes me big fucking time and so now it's like okay you know what maybe that maybe that helicopter ride date we don't need to save that for my birthday that's just gonna be the next meetup you know what instead of like it's like fuck you now you're gonna get me four shea butter soaps and a fucking tennis necklace made of diamonds and that's what i'm worth it like, fuck you, you need to pay to have access in my life. Hmm, niggas annoy me. Peace out.